beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the word of God, and even as we are about listening to that. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. stay blessed Shabarus kapranda gabalakosa freske de belekusia. Father, breathe upon me, breathe upon me, breathe upon me. Let your word come with power, with fire, with grace. Breathe upon me. Breathe upon me. Elan sobrande geberetuskia fala suprasta. Pray for the hearing ear, the seeing eye, the ear that hears, the eye that sees, the heart that receives. Is someone talking to the Lord this morning? For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. So there are a number of things in my spirit to share with us um, wherever we can stop this morning like i did tell us yesterday this is a believers conference and the lord seeks to bring us to the place of power the place of wisdom but that comes only through the channel of the word let me recap on a few things that i did say yesterday number one i said how that there is a predefined pathway in the spirit there is a progression as far as the believers faith work is concerned please do not forget this that in god's economy you do not just start from nowhere into somewhere there is an exact starting point for the journey of the believer and we establish that that starting point is an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God. Remember that? That the moment you encounter Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have begun your journey, your spirit walk, your faith walk. And that no matter how far you've been around the things of God, outside of and without an encounter with Jesus, the Son of the Living God, you have not begun the journey. Jesus called himself the way. He's the way that leads you into that reality called the truth that will finally minister life to you. So Jesus said, I am the way. Are we together now? In fact, he says, no man cometh to the Father except by me. So I told us that the way to encounter Jesus is captured in what we call the message, the gospel of salvation. Um, we did take our time to examine a few things about the gospel of salvation how that not every information about jesus translates to salvation do not forget this there are many nice things about jesus but there is an exact content that makes up the gospel maybe to add one more scripture 
in addition to that which I gave you yesterday, you may want to consider 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 1 to 4. That is about the most concise explanation of the gospel by Apostle Paul himself. In fact, if media can help us, let's look at it very quickly. I'm just doing a very quick recap on yesterday because it's important to understand so that we'll be able to connect with what God is discussing today. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand. Verse 2, by which ye are also saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. Verse 3 now, reading to 4. For I delivered unto you first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, follow carefully now, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4. And that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day according to scripture. This is the gospel. Paul is saying, when I came to you, this was what I communicated to you. That Christ died, he was buried, he rose again on the third day according to the scripture. Hallelujah. Then I told us that um, when you encounter salvation in what you call the new birth experience, that that is not supposed to be the end of the journey. Hallelujah. Now, respectfully speaking, and I say this with every sense of honor, I came from an evangelical background, and so I have a great appreciation for those who have pioneered evangelism and the gospel. But I think the limitation that came largely with the evangelical movement was that there was no system for continuity for the believers that God saved. So there was a very excellent work in terms of bringing people to the fold, but there were many believers who did not even know that growth was a possibility and a requirement. And like I did tell us yesterday, when you harvest something from the farm, you don't leave it there, it will rot. Are we together now? That your encounter with Jesus Christ brings within your spirit eternal life, but that is only the beginning of the journey. I told you that you will need to be exposed to three, a threefold force. Number one is the ministry of the teaching priest. According to Jeremiah 3.15, do not forget this, that the teaching priest has an assignment to work in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God to begin your process of training, which is your process of transformation. In order of eternal priority, anyone who is not saved, the first and the greatest need of an unsaved person is salvation. Beyond healing, beyond a job, beyond children, any other thing you give to an unsaved person that is less than salvation was not God's ultimate for that person. But that when salvation happens, the next assignment is transformation. Are we together? You can use this formula as a pastor to literally grow and mature the people in your church. There's no confusion about it. They, they can become something exact when you know what to do after what point. So if a new believer comes to meet you and say, now that I'm what to do? You can tell him the next process now is transformation. What is transformation? The name given to the process that makes you become like Christ in experience. He says, my little children of whom I travail until Christ be formed in you. The formation of Christ in his entirety, all the, mul the multifaceted dimensions of Christ being formed, furnished in experience within that believer. Are we together now? That is very important. And I told us, watch this, that what you call destiny, according to ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 what you call destiny is not something you invent by yourself please do not forget that that you don't sit down and just decide or choose your destiny the bible talks about the concept of predestination are we together predestination means that in the mind of god he says here we are his workmanship i'll talk a bit about that created in christ jesus unto good works 
which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So God does not just scratch his head wondering what to do with your life when you arrive or when you become saved. No, there is a script that has been written already according to prophecy and according to predestination. Now, whether you will leave out that script or not is dependent on your cooperation with the will of God. Are we together now? It is possible that you can spend your life not living that destiny. And then you will find out that it is possible because of the extent of your faithfulness, God can add an assignment to you that was not in the original script of your life. Because someone who was supposed to play that role has failed and God can give his bishopric to another. It's in the Bible. His bishopric let another take. In other words, the until the call and the assignment so it's possible to see someone start maybe as a kingdom financier and end up as an evangelist and as, as an apostle because there is a way you can align through your diligence and submission to the spirit like you'll be learning you will be too available for the kind the kind of mandate you are carrying you would have developed yourself beyond that mandate God will honor you by adding another assignment and increasing your ranking in the spirit. For instance, Stephen. Stephen in the Bible. Are we Bible students now? Stephen was confined within the jurisdiction of the welfare department. But the level of alignment and submission to the spirit was beyond that level. And it pushed him to another kind of experience again. And I foresee that in this end time there are people... Who like Eli I hope you know that there was no prophecy that Elisha was supposed to be a prophet. No. It was not in Elisha's destiny to be a prophet. Elisha was a farmer. The next prophet who would succeed the mantle of Elijah was supposed to come from the school of the prophets. That was the culture of the prophets. They would have the school where they were mentoring and raising certain people. But that farmer became so aligned so available in fact he was the only one that followed elisha even down to jordan elijah down to jordan there was nothing elijah would do to drive him away the prophets even said i hope you know god is going to take your master now so the guys were learning their prophetic insight was sharpening they were not lying yet none of them received it that was why it surprised them when the mantle fell upon elisha and he parted the jordan they said, truly, the spirit of Elijah doth rest upon Elisha. Are we learning now? I told us yesterday that the process of transformation starts with looking onto Jesus, not destiny. It, as you look at Jesus and you love him and you press into him, watch this now. The spirit of the living God who has been sent to guide us through the path of destiny will start putting you in a particular pathway there are certain experiences that will start happening to you that you may think are unique to you till you start studying scripture you will start finding parallels of your experiences are we together now and then i did tell us yesterday that all the names you see in the bible abraham esther isaac gideon that these are not just names of men alone but that those men embody different spiritual pathways that produce different kinds of believers. Are we together now? So when you mention the name Esther, you are not just mentioning a beautiful woman who married a Hazarus. You are also mentioning a kind of training that leads to a kind of believer. Do you understand what I'm teaching you? When you mention Moses, you are not just mentioning a prophet who was a stammerer who led about 2.5 million people out. No, you are mentioning a spiritual pathway that leads to a kind of prophet. Mm. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger. Oh, our hearts always hunger. Hmm. So when you mention Mary, all that comes to the mind of an untrained believer 
is that virgin woman who donated her womb to become the mother of Jesus. But Mary is not just the name of a woman. Mary is also the description of a spiritual pathway that prepares women to host certain visions of a revival. Are we together now? Listen, listen. You must understand this so that as you begin to follow Jesus, you will find yourself becoming like somebody in the Bible. There must be a name in the Bible that your life starts becoming. If it is the Spirit of God that is leading you, you cannot become nothing. No. So you find out that I'm looking like Moses. My training looks like Moses. Number one, it's not even my biological mother who is raising me. Number two, in the midst of hostility, I am in an environment of hostility and yet I don't seem to be touched by spirit. Until the Holy Ghost opens your eyes, you will just think I'm just loving God and going to church. It is by discernment you will see that there is a formation. There is a pathway. And that is how mantles come to men. Watch this. Look at this. Do you know how people receive mantles? They receive mantles by becoming exactly like the vessel that the mantle was upon before. So that the mantle does not even know it has come on a new person. This is the same principle practiced by witchcraft. Watch this. If I want to bring a demon spirit here, I will have to create the former habitat of that demon spirit to look exactly here so that the demon spirit can be transferred and not know. That was why God prepared us to look like heaven. Now the Holy Ghost can live in us as though he's in the throne room. Are you getting this now? Yes. This is a mystery in the spirit. When a mantle comes and the vessel does not look like the mantle there, it will not rest on you. That is why the, the assignment is you must be prepared. So I want the mantle of Elijah. It is the training of Elijah that starts ship training you and chiseling you. By the time you become that portrait of Elijah through sacrifice, you don't have to pray for the mantle. It will come. So the mantle can keep, there are mantles that will keep going around Yola, but not rest on every, because there is a formation that mantle is looking for to rest. You see where our prayers in the body of Christ is largely a prayer of ignorance. Oh God, let it fall. No, it is not. The first people did not pray for it to fall. They only went through a school in the spirit. And as they exhausted a pathway, they found out that they were hosting superior dimensions of grace. Apostle, I want to be Naomi. The mantle of Naomi does not just rest upon you because you are a woman. No. Naomi is not just a woman. Naomi is also a spiritual pathway. Ruth is not just a young lady marrying Boaz. Ruth is also a spiritual pathway. Look, if you learn what I've taught you, it will be one of the greatest secrets you have learned. That means every grace you see is available, but there is a formation. Are we together now? My assignment this morning is to show you how men are formed from the ordinary version of them to become vessels of honor that can hold certain mantles. Because nobody is prepared by default, not even Jesus. There is a pathway as you follow that pathway look at me women many of you make cakes and you make um cookies and you make whatever am i right on that when you get your flour and start beating it it looks flat but remember it can become any shape is that true but usually there you have something that looks like the shape you want that to become and you put it inside and force it to assume that shape am i right on that that's what i want to show you this morning how do ordinary men start that process of metamorphosis in the spirit? How does an ordinary young man suddenly become a prophet? What happens to him? How does a young lady all of a sudden now carry power? Genuine power. How does a young man who comes from a family full of poverty and failure suddenly becomes a trustee, a treasurer of the kingdom? 
What path did he follow? What did he tell God? What did God tell him? Listen, when you understand this, my assignment is complete here. Because you can now start producing men and reproducing men of power. That means it does not matter who comes to you. Once they are willing, now you know the pathway. You can guarantee that in three, five years, you will produce a sign and a wonder. You will stop maintaining members in your church. You will produce witnesses and spiritual men. Are we together? Respectfully speaking, praise God. All right, thank you. What happens in many of our churches is that there is just a maintenance of membership. And I'm not saying this to insult, but the church was not supposed to be a place of maintenance. It was supposed to be a spiritual house of convergence and training where ordinary men begin to, through the ministry of the teaching priest, like I taught you, they subscribe themselves to an exact template. Are we together now? And that in an average church, after one, two, three, four, five years, I should come and see a formation of certain Bible figures. That means if I come, I should see a Joseph forming, an Elijah forming, an Esther forming. Somewhere in the choir, I should see a Jael forming. Are we together now? Yes. That's how you know a living church. When something about the lives of the membership starts becoming a parallel of the figures that you see in the Bible. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says, they are for our learning. So that we through faith and the patience, the comfort of scripture might find hope. But right now there is a blind claim of dimensions, blind claim of realms. Oh, I claim Elijah's mantle. I claim Moses' mantle. It doesn't happen that way. No. No. How do men transit in the spirit? How do men rise in the spirit? How do men prepare for the glory? When you know this, ladies and gentlemen, you will know why a few people in our world seem so powerful as though God just ignored everybody and isolated a few people. No, no. The Bible says, nevertheless, the foundation of the Lord standeth sure. Listen carefully. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Is that in your Bible? It says, and let any man that named the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Are we still together? Then the Bible says, in a great house. Everybody say great house. A great house like a great church. A great house like your ministry. It says, beware, O man of God. That's why I said, please invite as many men of God. Because I'm talking to everybody, but my focus is largely on the shepherds. Because one man of God can represent 300, 500, 1,000 members. So if I talk to you well, I've spoken to 1,000 people well. In a great house, he's saying this is an information every teaching priest must carry. That the moment God sends members to your church, there are always four kinds of vessels there. Number one, the vessels of gold. Two, vessels of silver. Three, vessels of wood for vessels of clay no matter the church and the bible says some vessels are unto honor based on their desperation based on their alignment based on their press towards spiritual things whereas some other vessels are unto dishonor in other words don't be surprised when you find people disinterested with spiritual things don't let it frustrate you as a man of God and make you think you are not doing a good job. The Bible already told you in a great house, you will find these kinds of vessels. There are people, no matter what you do, you fast and pray, they have purposed in their hearts not to be serious with the things of God or they have pegged themselves at a spiritual level and you cannot force them against their will. Yours is to just pray for them that God will open their eyes. You can choose as an act of your will to not be serious with God. He will honor your decision. But the consequences is that there is a dimension of glory that should emanate from the saints that will not come from your life or through your life. Are we together? Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time 
He says, it's not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is a dimension of glory that is supposed to be revealed from the saints. And the Bible says, for the earnest expectation, listen carefully, of creation awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says, for creation itself was subject to vanity, not willfully, but by reason of him, Adam now, the same who subjected him in hope. And the Bible says, 21, it says, because the creature itself will be delivered from a mystery called the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints. Hallelujah. There is no territory that cannot experience revival. There is no individual that cannot experience revival. The key most times is we are not students of history. We are not students of patterns. We are not students of scripture. And so, or we study scripture without the illumination of the spirit. And all we read there is just story. But when you find out, you see, the truth is that the secret of the future is hidden in yesterday. Yesterday holds the key to tomorrow. If you understand the mysteries and the patterns of the spirit. Because according to Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6, this is the mystery that controls the manifestation of God's glory. And he showed this to Moses. He said, the Lord instructed Moses, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. And the glory shall appear unto you. The glory is the end product of walking in keeping with certain spiritual patterns. When you walk in keeping with certain spiritual patterns, the end of that journey is glory. Hallelujah. Are we together? So, you won't believe I've not even started my lectures for this morning are we together wherever we stop we give glory to God so where do we start this morning let's start from Ephesians let's do Ephesians 2 10 the Bible says for we are his workmanship let me start from there what does it mean to be a workmanship look up please do you know what it means the word workmanship means we are a testament of his artistry we are his investments we are the product of his intelligence when they say a man's workmanship when a tailor comes look up please when a tailor sews a beautiful dress you say that dress is the workmanship of the tailor that means you want to know how good that tailor is look at that dress when it is complete not when he's tearing it into pieces are we together now when the Bible says we are his workmanship, that means the finished version of you should reveal something about God that will be a wonder. Are you getting the point now? That when people see God working in you, now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be like. But when you stay with God, walking on course, following your predefined pathway, that the finished version of you must be his workmanship. In other words, that men will see you. Did the Bible not say, let your light so shine before men? Am I right on that? Matthew chapter 5 and verse 16. It says that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven. In John chapter 15 and verse 8. It says, herein is my father glorified. When ye bear much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. John 15 and verse 16. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you. The word ordained means to legitimize your operation. That you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit will remain. Galatians 1.24 And they glorified God in me. This is where we are going with all this journey. That you get to a point where your life becomes a sign and a wonder. In fact, the Bible calls us living epistles. You know what that means? Your life should be a continuation of someone's Bible study. That when he closes his Bible at home, the moment he sees you, you are that Bible opened again. He continues learning God through your life. That what he did not understand in studying scripture, your life becomes an explanation. Man can use your life as a tool to learn God. 
we are his workmanship created in christ jesus the bible says unto good works which god had for ordained that will walk in them are we still together say amen if you are still here right so i want to show you five requirements very quickly this morning there are five requirements that every believer who is being formed to become that vessel of glory must subscribe to must submit to must give yourself to listen to me there is no there is no negotiation the moment you ignore these five mystery pathways there is no possibility of arriving to become a vessel of glory but no matter who you are start that journey and walk in keeping with these five principles i give you a guarantee by the integrity of the, of jesus christ the end of your life will be a glory and a praise to you to him and to the nations are you ready for that pray in the spirit in one minute as god opens us up to these spiritual pathways someone is praying your life is changing there is a transition that is happening to you even in the spirit there is an ascendance in the spirit that is happening to you hallelujah hallelujah so Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 says stand ye in the way it begins by revealing a very deep mystery watch this that anything God wants to have continuity of he ensures that a pattern is left behind so that whoever wants to get that dimension of glory will follow that path too are we together and Jeremiah picked this by the spirit give it to us thus saith the Lord stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old path wherein is the good way and walk therein it says and ye shall find rest for your soul so there is a pathway that turns ordinary men to vessels of glory vessels of power there are certain spiritual activities and spiritual practices that when the believer begins to engage in the end of it is the revelation of the glory of God in his life are we together in fact the Bible puts it this way that he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but that he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal that means everybody is a farmer everything you do every day is likened to sowing and that there is a guaranteed harvest that comes corruption a life of weakness decadence confusion pain subjugation by all kinds of demonic and elemental forces or a life of glory and dominion acts chapter 2 and verse 42 this is the first official revelation of the template that the early church followed to become men of power Will you be able to read it? Can we read together? One to read. And they continued steadfastly uh -huh, in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. One more time. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So let's discuss... The factors now number one that that which transits ordinary men into men of power into men of grace into men of ability in the spirit are we together now is a strategic and a systemic prayer life write it down a strategic and a systemic prayer life you want to evolve from the old you 
to transit into that which can host the glory of God. Are we together now? The first defined pathway as revealed by Jesus himself and revealed by the early church and revealed by modern history that everyone who followed the path that evolved them into men of fire and glory were men who had a strategic and a systemic prayer life. I didn't just say a prayer life because many of you have a prayer life but your prayer life is not beneficial because it is not strategic and it is not systemic. When you have a conditional prayer life, you will never evolve into a man of power. When you have a need-driven prayer life, you will never evolve into a man of power. I don't have the time, but there are four assignments of prayer in the life of the believer. Prayer itself does not do everything, but there are four assignments of prayer. I may not explain it. Maybe let me just list it. I've done teachings on that. You can get it. The first and the greatest assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for your growth and spiritual transformation. That means the real assignment of prayer is not just for things to come to you. No, it's for your spiritual evolution that you evolve in the place of prayer like a snake molting, living its former self and assuming a new shape. That's what prayer does. Luke chapter 9 and verse 29. The Bible says, and as he prayed, the he being Jesus, the Bible says the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistening. Unfortunately for most believers, the scope of our prayer life is simply a platform to make petitions and for needs. Are we together? And so once we go to pray, we say things like, father thank you you are the lion of the tribe of judah the root of david and all those kinds of things and there's nothing wrong with that father i've come again you see this issue i'm telling you give me rest give me this this issue of a child but you see the real assignment of prayer if prayer was just to receive things jesus would not need to pray because he was the word himself yet he immersed himself in prayer because prayer is principally a mysterious spiritual platform that can help men to activate their organs of interacting with the realm of the spirit one of the first key that you are excelling in your prayer life is a heightened sense of discernment your perception now begins to grow prayer this is one of the blessings of the ministry of praying tongues is supposed to be an opportunity for you to explore the riches in the spirit as you pray so when you invest time i said strategic and systemic prayer do you know why because when you study in acts chapter 3 from verse 1 acts chapter 3 and verse 1 the bible talks about peter and john are we bible students that now Peter and John went together into the temple at the hour of prayer. Everybody say hour of prayer. One more time. Say hour of prayer. Say routine of prayer. When prayer is not systemic for you, it cannot evolve you into a person of power. There, there was the early apostles had what we call the hour of prayer. That means their prayer life was systemic and methodical in our world we have what we call breakfast am i right breakfast in our world is within the range of 6 a.m to maybe 9 am i right on that and then we have lunch anything from maybe 12 1 2 3 4 and then we have dinner or supper so you can know that is your hour of breakfast your hour of lunch your hour of dinner and the bible says there is something called the hour of prayer the hour of prayer dedicated for your spiritual growth and your prayer so when it becomes systemic and you know that the first and the greatest assignment of prayer is for your spiritual evolution I promise to give you the remaining four can I run through it to you number two the second assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is for obtaining requests and making petitions the second assignment of prayer is for obtaining requests and making petitions the bible says in philippians chapter 4 
and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto god am i right on that yes so the second assignment of prayer is as a platform for making request matthew 11 mark 11 24 it says verily verily i say unto you what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them number three very quickly the third assignment of prayer in the life of the believer is for spiritual legislation the ability to speak and create realities even in the place of prayer i prophesied as i was commanded and there was a sound in the place of prayer you can create possibilities the things that are not you call them and give life and give shape to them in the spirit finally the fourth assignment of prayer as revealed from scripture is as a platform for warfare and prophetic intercession peter satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not and when thou art converted use the same formula to strengthen your brethren are we learning i'm praying that as you are listening to me the holy ghost is doing something to your appetite for the word that your desire for the word that you will have an appetite to study to show yourself approved unto god a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word listen the end time ministry will not just be a ministry of power it will be a ministry of power that comes after the communication of the word because christ manifests as the wisdom of god and the power of god not the power of god alone are we learning now so let's go back to our the first force the first mystery that i'm teaching you that makes and molds men to become careers superior careers of the glory of god strategic and systemic prayer life look up please it is your responsibility to work with the holy ghost and based on the schedules of your life to come up with strategic time periods per day per week per month per seasons that are dedicated to your prayer life for the purpose of transformation this is the responsibility dimension of power and grace are we together it cannot be a one-off rule for everybody because say for instance a young man who now begins to explore god say as a student on campus he may have a bit of liberty because at that point he's not married he does not have responsibilities am i together his responsibility is largely academic and maybe if he has a fellowship that is leading so he has a bit of time and he can create design a spiritual growth process out of that available time but fast forward 10 years after that time you are most likely a father a mother a leader maybe a pastor with a church you cannot use that campus template today it will not work you will be called an irresponsible person so you walk with the holy spirit and keep adjusting moments but that by all means you must have a systemic and a strategic prayer life i for one i have found the night periods into the early hours of the mornings as the best for anyone because all men sleep it is given for men to sleep are we together now my days are very busy and they continue to be increasingly busy but it is not an excuse to stop my growth it's not an excuse to stop my training there are many people who started dying when they started ministry because administration can distract you we are going to learn that in acts chapter 6 and verse 4 when they wanted to turn um, peter and the other apostles to become men who were just doing administrative duties they said no 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 there was a template that was given to us we are not apostles for nothing if we leave that and begin to serve tables there is nothing wrong in serving tables but something there is a consecration that is making us evolve we will not be able to arrive with that template and he said select among yourself men who are full of wisdom are we together and of honest report six and verse four acts chapter six and verse four says but we will give ourselves continually 
to the to prayer and to the ministry of the word everybody say prayer Luke 18 and verse 1, the Bible says he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says pray without ceasing. It doesn't mean pray from morning till night. It means be consistent with your prayer. James 5, 13, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Let him pray. I submit to you that an attack on your prayer life is an attack on your potential for growth. And Satan will use legitimate excuses to distract you. Your wife, ministry administration, your job, whatever it is, is your responsibility. 24 hours is enough to be able to squeeze out quality time and spend with God. Are we together? God is everywhere. But it does not meet with men everywhere. No. God is everywhere. But it does not meet with men everywhere. Even you as a human being. If you respect someone and you want to have an appointment. You will not tell him come and meet me at the junction. You can be everywhere. Above the messy seat. Above the cherubims. Below the messy seat. There I will meet with you. And I will communicate with you face to face. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. So, sometimes the Holy Ghost can help you and give you certain instructions from 12 to 2. Let that be the time dedicated for me. It can change. But then 12 o'clock, midnight, when others are sleeping, there you are in your room. Shabakatoskiata. Rando Seleke Parusiata. Blessed are you, O oh God. And for months, nothing will happen. You will keep praying. Or at least you do not sense that anything is happening. Lord, where is your voice? Where is the encounter I'm experiencing? Mm -mm, nothing will happen. One day, something is going to happen to you. You will come to the place of prayer like before. And while you are praying, Shalika Prandege Siata, there he comes, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He will reveal himself to you in a way that only you can know. And he will place an unction and a grace upon you. He will measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit. You will come out of that experience. You may not even know what has happened to you. Till you go back to the place of assignment and you will see like Moses that a dimension of the glory has rested on your face. It's others that will look at you. Do you know Moses met God and others did not have to go up the mountain. They had to look at Moses to have the same experience that God had. That God gave him. So we bow as we enter the throne room. And we cast ourselves down at your feet. For you are holy, thou art holy. There is none like you in your presence. That is where I must be. Bela Shalika Parusiata. And in that place of prayer, downloads of the prophetic blueprint of your destiny starts coming. One day in the place of prayer, you will now hear, I have called you and I have ordained you to be a prophet to the nations. You will write it. It does not make sense, but you will write it. Now your destiny is piecing together. One day you will go to prayer and the Lord will tell you that your anointing will move upon the stringed instrument. You will write it. These are all the pieces of the the, the puzzles that help you to be a carrier of the glory. I will reveal my dark sayings upon the harp. And you will write it down. And then you will pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Pray and pray again. Until your body begins to have a formation. And you see the mantle 
that was assigned to that body starts coming because the more the formation is is an attracting power that is how spirits come into bodies because the bodies look like the vessels that they currently are in so they can leave that body and come into another body you subject yourself to prayer hey, 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 hey. you are praying ah, weeks becoming months Shaleke pakato prande gevereko siata, lembra taka parakato siata. In one room, no no pedigree, no nothing, but a superior version of you is evolving from a family full of curses. Don't worry about the curses. You just submit yourself to prayer. En teka parokas kafra teke beleke to siata. Ah, there is a fire that begins to be burning in your spirit as you submit yourself to prayer submit yourself to prayer the bible says he maketh his ministers wings numa his spirit his, 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 his angels wings and his ministers flames of fire that's what is happening to you as you submit yourself to prayer systemic prayer strategic prayer Embrekatekaparakatoska Hello, Imadona. Hello, Imadona. The ministry of prayer forming you shaping you molding you you are subscribing to a spiritual template that is making you become a kind a type of vessel you are attracting by your diligence attracting by your consistency a kind of mantle a kind of grace and a kind of glory In the name of Jesus. Now sit down. Sit down. Shase Bahasko Brande Geberetu Siakabra. Now listen carefully. Please, I want you to covenant with yourself that you are going to get this morning's teaching listen to it again by the spirit of god i'm revealing to you a very deep mysterious irrefutable formula i want you to listen to what i'm about to tell you now everybody please listen please let me have your attention there is a side effect to becoming prayerful that you may not know now that you have prayed i want you to listen the moment you submit yourself to prayer you are in a position of a dangerous risk that i must tell you listen 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 do you know why because the law of the altar is that the moment you submit yourself to prayer watch this your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit become alive and become heightened and this if satan cannot stop you from prayer the next thing that he does is to appear as an angel of light. That's why I said, listen to what I'm about to teach you. Many people's deception started because of the health of their prayer life. 
many especially those called into the apostolic and the prophetic ministry i will tell you most of the error the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith and they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of visions it is a risk to suddenly be open to the realm of encounters because as a naive believer exploring the realm of the spirit anything you see in your vision can be told you that it is god listen carefully there are people who went up the mountain sincerely and came back with ordinances that were not from god there are people who sincerely submitted themselves to days and weeks of prayer and fasting and came back with spiritual templates from the realm of the spirit but not by the holy ghost there are people who came back with their organs activated along the lines of the prophetic sincerely they were not wrong people when jesus went to pray who did he meet in the wilderness please talk to me <laughs> when your jesus went to pray i thought prayer should drive the devil but guess who was waiting for Jesus in the place of prayer? After praying for 40 days with fasting, I thought you would see Satan shaking and running away. Satan was patiently waiting. That means when you give yourself to prayer, it's not only angels you are attracting. The realm of the spirit, because it's the prayers of the saints are like an incense that rise. And there is a signal in the realm of the spirit. There is somebody who is assuming that formation of the glory. And Satan will take advantage of your sincerity. That's why I said promise that you will listen to this teaching again. That is the reason why those who submit to the ministry of prayer alone are in danger. Did you hear what I said? I've told you prayer is not everything. Prayer does act. Prayer has its ministry. But many people have shut down on every other provision that makes for the growth of the saints. And they have immersed themselves in a bid to access power. The only thing they know and the only thing they may have done, sincerely so, is prayer. And most of them have come with all kinds of erroneous things. Doctrines. So someone will tell you in the place of prayer, I went somewhere in the spirit. I don't know where. And I came back with a message. I came back with certain things. And you will see a semblance of power. And it begins to graduate until it becomes like the doctrine of Balaam. There are many things today, respectfully speaking, that have polluted the sanctity of the altar in the body of Christ today. It did not come by the ministry of wicked men. They were not wicked. They were sincere people who did not understand the full scope of the training. And they chose one aspect of the training and left the rest. And the devil cast in on their sincerity and revealed things to them that have become a destruction to themselves. I know people who prayed and prayed until they had mental problems. Have you seen people like that? And even while they are mad, they are praying in tongues. It looks like a mockery to God. Eventually, they will take them to the hospital and sedate them. No, genuine prayer does not lead to that. But I told you there is a risk because it exposes you and you encounter all kinds of spirits and every spirit is speaking. So you will hear a spirit from the realm of the spirit loud and clear and you say go and stand by the road and because your heart is already inclined to obey you will say yes lord and go and stand but you find out that the more you obey that spirit that formation of christ has stopped you are becoming like something else that is not christ this is where the next training comes right please the ministry of the word the second key that helps the believer to become a person of stature is the ministry of the word is god helping us i know the lion i know the lamb i know the lion i know the lamb 
I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I believe in the lion. I believe in the lamb. I follow the lion. I follow the lamb. Hallelujah. Listen. The ministry of the word and the ministry of prayer has become an age-long conflict which is more superior to which especially in the pentecostal and the charismatic circles now i'm saying this respectfully this is a believers meeting am i right on that so we have a group that may perceive themselves to be people of prayer especially the prophetic and the apostolic ministry then we have those who perceive themselves to be people of the word and sometimes the dichotomy is so wide that it almost looks as if there is enmity but the bible never created that dichotomy are we together jesus called himself the word but he said my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations am i right on that now i want to show you the roles that they play please look up jesus went as the word of god went in matthew chapter 4 jesus went to go and pray and fast everybody please look up please look up please look up please look up jesus is done praying everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time say prayer. prayer jesus is done praying and the next thing he sees is that satan appears to him am i right on that whether it's from the realm of his thoughts or it was a physical manifestation, the most important thing is that there was an interaction with this spirit entity, Satan. Are we together? And watch this. The first thing Satan told him is, don't forget that prayer produces power. Now in the place of prayer, you have power. Turn this stone to bread. In other words, convert that power to be an instrument for meeting your personal need. Forget about the bigger cause. That is the first there are three temptations every man must survive to rise i'm not teaching on that but those temptations of jesus number one is a temptation on your stomach manipulating the word of god and ministry to be used as an instrument of your stomach number two is spiritual laxity he took him up a holy mountain and said fall down spiritual carelessness for he shall put his angels charge over you the third temptation is a temptation of influence he took him into an exceeding great mountain and showed him the kingdoms of this world and their glories therefore and he said bow to me and i will give this to you but this is not what we're discussing now watch this satan comes to jesus and said turn this stone to bread look at jesus's reply it is he never said i have prayed it is help me it is why didn't he say satan are you not respecting my prayer and fasting do you not know the energy that has been generated there he said it is written do you know if jesus said okay satan that's a nice suggestion and turn that stone to bread his entire prayer life the spiritual investment he has made will be nothing simply because he did not know what was written then let me show you now the value of prayer added to the word satan said oh i see that you respect the word too so let's speak scripture now next temptation satan also said it is written he shall put his angels to his angels charge over you they shall bear thee up on their wings satan is quoting scripture now lest you dash your feet against a stone now satan is saying it is written you are saying it is written that is where the power of prayer comes in that gives you the discernment because if you do if you have scripture alone and no discernment that has been generated satan will come like the damn cell in acts chapter 16 and also join you in prophesying and you say they are saying scripture is someone learning now satan said it is written i know it too and jesus said no by discernment i know that even though what is coming out of your mouth is scripture but you are not of god hmm. 
there are many many people today who have the word but they just have history and literature in their minds because the power that that backs up the word that should be generated in the place of prayer is not there and so most people just become respectfully speaking historians and they just make the bible says ye search the scripture for in them you think you will find life and you will not come to me that the scriptures themselves testify of me but ladies and gentlemen do you know why the word of god is powerful because the word of god creates boundaries to your spiritual experiences the bible has a lot to say about the word of god for instance in colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 the bible talks about the supremacy of the word the supremacy of the word please give it to us i hope someone is learning something this morning colossians 1 16. let's read it if you can see it ready one to read please for by him the word now were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him do you know what that means that means even if you have an encounter outside this realm the word of god still has supremacy and you can use the word of god to vet every experience so an angel can appear to you and you can judge by the speakings of that angel if it does not reveal jesus and it does not lead you through the pathway you have a right to judge that angel by the word to say no this is inconsistent with the character of god most people do not have the word of god and it has destroyed them in ministry look at this for instance let's assume that this gentleman seated and this lady say they are husband and wife do you know as a man of god by prayer and through the prophetic i can see for instance that there's something wrong with that lady but how i will handle it now would depend on my understanding of scripture not my understanding of prayer if this is a man of god and this is your church and this is your wife and there is something wrong number one the bible says do not rebuke an elder in public so i'm not about to go and embarrass him and the wife because it will have an effect on the fold are you seeing how the word of god guides you now to administer power with wisdom many people through the prophetic have, have have accessed graces but the word of god does not define the coordinates of their administering power and they keep they keep you know mismanaging power imagine an electric a high voltage naked wire on the ground will it do you any profit no you hold it and it will kill you but that same power can be channeled through a socket and you can charge something with it are you seeing now the word of god that's why the power of god resides within the word of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 the bible says in that sun like splendor is the hiding place of his power dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline